Court. The U.S. Supreme Court said Monday that most sufficient parts of President Donald Trump's executive order banning travel and immigration from several countries with high frequencies of terrorism will function while the court considers the case. The Supreme Court lifted most of the injunction blocking the president's travel ban, allowing it to be implemented in most instances. Exceptions to the ban would cover individuals with a bona fide relationship with an American citizen. Trump's executive order would ban immigration for 90 days from Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria and Yemen. Trump's order limits travel from six countries for 90 days and suspends the refugee program for 120 days, which means that the order will have almost expired before the court gathers to decide if Trump acted within his powers to publish it. The president's temporary travel ban was blocked in May by the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals approving a federal judge's decision from March. The Fourth Circuit ruled the order contained vague words of national security, but its context drips with religious intolerance, animus and discrimination. The appeals court based its ruling in large part on Trump's campaign rhetoric as a candidate. The court said, then-candidate Trump's campaign statements reveal that on numerous occasions, he expressed anti-Muslim sentiment, and well as his intent, if elected to ban Muslims from the United States. Acting Solicitor General Jeffrey Wall said the Fourth Circuit failed to adhere to foundational legal rules in its ruling to halt the temporary travel ban. Wall said, the Constitution and acts of Congress confer on the President broad authority to suspend or restrict the entry of aliens outside the United States when he deems it in the nation's interest. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals also blocked the executive order, saying that it violated immigration law. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below. Special report The main reason why the market is down is One of President Trump's main campaign promises was that he is going to protect Medicare and Social Security at all cost. On this, he said, As President, I'll secure and strengthen Medicare and Social Security. We'll do this with strong economic growth by bringing our jobs back from Mexico and China, by establishing new jobs and stopping U.S. corporations from fleeing from our country. Well, recently he went on to fulfilling his promise but amplified several times. As reported, he announced that monthly payment is raised to $1,360 for single recipients and $2,260 for married couples. Furthermore, Currently working Social Security recipients will witness increased earnings this year, without being penalized. Due to President Trump's reforms, receivers under 65 will be able to earn up to $16,920 and those turning 66 as much as $44,880, up $3,000 from 2016. Long story short, President Donald Trump is bringing back our job and our economy will start to heal from the unmeasurable damage caused by the Obama administration. What do you think of this? Share your Massive news The whole nation in shock as Trump did something huge to Obama and his refugees. The vast majority of people don't have the foggiest idea about the fact that in Obama's last three months, there were 25,000 new refugees in the U.S. Under President Trump, 13,000 refugees have been let into the country. It is, for the most part, a result of the travel ban. The official travel ban that Trump presented toward the start of the year was the real primary step. It prevented individuals from rolling in from nations which have a mostly Muslim population. In 2016, Obama had his way of getting 110,000 refugees into the country. This is quite modest when contrasted with the number that of Germany, who acknowledges a million a year. As indicated by Pew Research, 116,000 refugees were acknowledged in 2016, this is the highest number in over 10 years for the U.S. Trump has drastically diminished the stream of immigrants. Trump has radically diminished the number to a quota of 50,000 for 2017. It's not an unavoidable reality since courts are probably going to challenge, as indicated by Daily Mail. IT's happening. He is caught sneaking back into the U.S. setting up a secret, private meeting in Washington, 
DC with Nancy Pelosi too. It's evident that individuals, for example, the Clintons have nearly nothing if any life outside of governmental issues. They give the feeling that they trust they were reproduced for ruling over others, and when they are deprived of the chance to do as such, they are lost. Maybe they don't accept there are any others as meriting power as are they. Whatever the reason, they are self-important, as well as are intolerable bores. Try not to look now, however a portion of the old pack that was turned out of office because of the November decision and additionally a couple of who stick to control frantically are back for a social affair in Washington, D.C. Our republic is never sheltered when these individuals are getting and conjuring together what naughtiness they can do to the Constitution and the opportunities we appreciate. Mr. Obama is back in D.C. with plans to hold a private meeting for different agents featuring Eric Holder and Nancy Pelosi at a private home. Unmistakably, he has no goal of blurring from the political scene, paying little respect to how demolished his legacy has progressed toward becoming. Most likely rankled with what President Trump has done to that legacy, we can make sure that he has a plan to harm his successor to the best degree conceivable. So, it's somewhat fascinating how this was revealed. Barack Obama was caught sneaking back into the United States via Alaska, and he is hellbent on getting to Washington, D.C., for a secret meeting that was just uncovered. Reports have confirmed that Eric Holder, the former lawless attorney general, needs Obama at this clandestine meeting, and it's all about President Donald Trump. That is all extremely unusual, and asks various inquiries, however, the primary one is what is the reason for this meeting? Obama made a big mistake of trying to sneak back into the United States by way of Alaska, where a woman thrust her baby into his arms, and she snapped a pic. That pic made it to the internet and alerted the Trump camp that Obama was coming back, and now, they know why. We don't know about such an excess of sneaking back routine since venturing out to his home in Washington, D.C. appears an extremely unremarkable occasion. Be that as it may, this still remains an exceptional story, and we've come this far so we'll chomp, what's this about? Since the jig was up, Obama's people went to CNN to make an announcement. Obama will head the fundraiser for the National Democratic Redistricting Committee. NDRC, at a private home in Washington that will also be attended by House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, D. California, and will be hosted by former Attorney General Eric Holder, CNN reported Monday. Notwithstanding the charged explanations behind Mr. Obama's clearly meandering course in getting to Washington, D.C., what's the major war deal? After further investigation, it is quite a big deal. In fact, this blown secret meeting is the beginning of the former Obama administration's plot to defeat Trump in 2020. The National Democratic Redistricting Committee, NDRC, is what Obama confessed in the past is his main focus, his number one priority. In October 2016, Obama identified the NDRC as its primary political focus following his final term in office. Where he will be most politically engaged will be at the state legislative level with an eye on redistricting after 2020, White House political director David Simons told Politico. All things considered, at any rate, the motivation behind the meeting bodes well. The thought is to play with the limits in the states keeping in mind the end goal to get the right blend of voters in each area so as to prevent President Trump from winning in the Electoral College in 2020. Gerrymandering is the term. For the humor, we can read the propaganda released by an Obama spokesman, restoring fairness to our democracy by advocating for fairer, more inclusive district maps around the country is a priority for, now former, President Obama, said Kevin Lewis, a spokesman for the former president. According to CNN, the event marks Obama's first foray into politics since departing the White House on January 20. None of this comes as any shock to President Trump or his group. Indeed, they would need to be express political bozos not to expect this. Also, if Donald Trump is as proactive as he has turned out to be, he as of now has his kin taking a shot at this. Mr. Obama has a gigantic measured sense of self, so obviously, he will endeavor to accomplish an overwhelming picture. This is not to state he is without impact or ought to be disregarded. Yet, how about we not freeze right now?
all things considered, Barack battled to beat Donald Trump, and look where we are at now. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Mad World News. Seconds ago. Massive fraud just uncovered, after three-year investigation Washington revealed fraud on Obama, you'll cheer. We will concede that some administration programs start with great goals. Be that as it may, somewhere close to the time some official gets a thought, and the thing gets gone into law and afterward implemented, things frequently turn out badly. This is halfway because of the way that, dissimilar to a business, the legislature is not required or even anticipated that would turn a benefit on its projects. Thus, the inspiration to proficiency goes out the window and is as often as possible replaced by waste and fraud. This happens a lot with welfare programs as the possibility that it is great to ensure that individuals don't starve to death changes into a creature that does that, as well as gets mishandled as welfare cheats discover approaches to drain the system for benefits long ways past those to which they are entitled. This heartbreaking situation is rehashed again and again, as citizens cash winds up financing fraud. The Obama phone program is a terrific case of an administration program gone awful. What began as an arrangement to ensure everybody approached a phone to summon crisis help transformed into years of fraud and abuse. A new report from the Government Accountability Office, jail, reveals that the infamous Obama phone program, meant to provide low-income Americans phone and internet service, is riddled with waste, fraud and abuse. Jail investigators sampled the program's population and found that they had paid for nearly 6,400 phones for people whom the government has listed as deceased, another 5,500 people were enrolled for two phones and another group of people could not prove that they were eligible to receive their free phone. How does the administration figure out how to pay for telephones for dead individuals? Plainly those controlling this program are finished incompetence, or simply couldn't care less about doing their occupation. Such is the issue with government laborers when they are hard to flame, and their adequacy and the viability of the projects on which they work are not assessed or inspected. Originally conceived during the Reagan administration, Lifeline was originally meant to provide poor people with a phone in case of an emergency or, as time went on, to apply for a job. So there's the great goal. What's more, as the hypothesis goes, if these individuals really landed a position, they would drop off the moves for a free telephone and begin paying assessments, so the program should pay for itself after some time. Hasn't played out as expected by any means be that as it may. The three-year jail investigation found that the program has put away more than apostrophe dollar nine billion, as of September 2016 outside the Department of the Treasury on a private bank account. A spokesman for FCC Chairman Ajit Pai, who had already put the dubious program under review, said the jail report confirms that waste, fraud and abuse are all too prevalent in the program. Stop right there programs do not put money anywhere. People do. So who has diverted $9 billion into a private bank account? And who owns this private bank account? And how was this accomplished without being detected? There are more inquiries to be asked, for example, what was a definitive goal of this $9 billion in occupied assets? It's extraordinary that the JL is at work despite the fact that it appears to have taken them a considerable amount of time to discover this fraud. In any case, citizen cash should be saved, and this misuse of a program should be killed. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Briet Bar. Breaking, Ninth Circuit Court Disappoints President allows illegals right to. At the present levels of unlawful border bouncing in the United States from Central America, an entire 15% of them are unaccompanied minors. These kids are essentially stuck on a truck or transport, headed to the border, sent over into the U.S. with grown-up outsiders and, with a wing and a petition, are accepted to achieve their objective goal. Shockingly in the presence blasting Mexican and Central American human trafficking industry, 
A number of these kids never make it to the states without first being attacked, abused, or raped. Indeed, even the coyotes who are entrusted with getting these mass groups in the deserts close to the border have been known to take a few of these youngsters for their own evil purposes. That being stated, the parents who are sending them on their happy way are not considering the extraordinary peril to their youngsters, and the liberals in control in D.C. are not considering the monstrous costs required in lodging and watching over these starving strays. Enter the quick-talking legal counselors to guarantee this is bypassed. Progressives have quite recently gotten the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals to concur with them that these kids ought to be conceded American nationals' rights to a hearing. Yes I'm right, via Washington Examiner, a three-judge panel of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals said unanimously that unaccompanied minors, as children who migrate illegally, that, are known, have the right to bond hearings that determine whether they can be released until their case is heard in court. The judges said the federal government must follow the terms of a 1997 lawsuit settlement that required bond hearings for minors. Once in custody of the HHS, minors are typically detained for a short period before being allowed to join relatives or other sponsors in the interior of the country, until they have to appear in court. Government lawyers argued those statutes overruled the 1997 settlement, but the appeals court disagreed. The government may appeal the decision to a full panel of the Ninth Circuit, or to the Supreme Court. Yes I am right, the right to a bail hearing sounds great and is a right that Americans enjoy. Americans being the operative word there. This would be an open and closed issue if these were the citizens we were talking about, but what's happening here is that once again, illegals are given rights that they should not have. The very much contended body of evidence against the allowing of citizenship to unlawful foreigners' kids by virtue of Section 1 of the 14th Amendment has been completely displayed and a genuine elucidation of the privilege relating just to black freedmen and their kids specifically following the finish of the Civil War is there for the perusing. To give subjects rights to these kids is what might as well be called a heckler's veto where a man of no specialist is given the heaviness of expert through agreement by an outsider who additionally has no expert. This decision will be tested and crushed by the Supreme Court. The Trump Organization won't trouble with endeavoring to put this through the full Ninth Circus just in light of the fact that the outcomes will be precisely the same. At any rate with the Supreme Court. The benefits of the contention in light of the Constitution will be wrangled, rather than a subjective, unsettled issue by politically motivated justices hand picked by leftists to administer to support them. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. E. S. I'm right.